So welcome everyone to this year's uh, drawing layer talk. So uh, this year I wanted to concentrate not to take on, on a high level about the primitive stuff and all, all this again and what is happening in the background to uh, prepare uh, all the needed data for the rendering of the Ediffuse. This time I just wanted to show you four concrete examples which happened about the last year which are in the product um, and have l led to some uh, good speed ups and they describe pretty well where the problems are currently and mm -hmm. uh, seeing how to solve them uh, can help to understand um, how uh, to use the current techniques uh, to be able to solve such problems. So just let's start with, with one of my uh, favorite bugs in the last time, the squirrel bug. So um, the big problem is uh, that we have an SVG import which, which we got from an external uh, customer, I think it was Munich. They used a, a SVG graphic called Squirrel in very small form just in writer and this document just didn't work and the reason was really this SVG graphic, it's pretty big, uh, uh, half a megabyte and the reason it works so slow is it contains five SVG patterns each containing 440 polygons by itself just this to describe simple points, but 440 and five of those patterns in the SVG file. And these patterns are used uh, with uh, texture repeat to fill just poly polygons. And uh, this multiplies with the 440 polygons, so you had millions of simple polygons just to define the graphic in end effect when it was all uh, fold, folded up and prepared for rendering. So um, before render decomposes pattern and processes it transforms thousand times so there is actually some reuse when the pattern is prepared uh, as, as uh, primitive, it is, it is not copied or something, it's just uh, reference because uh, a primitive is a new API object. So that is not even the problem, but the problem is that really all of these polygons get transformed system dependent to the system dependent form and have to be rendered uh, in each, each for its own. And afterwards I just decided uh, don't do that, just pre-render uh, one of the tiles as RGBA and render it as bitmap. So this, this of course works too, but you have to do some fine tuning because quality uh, of uh, pre-render bitmaps is of course not as good, so you have to take care for the, for the output target. Is it output target bitmap like screen or uh, do you have meta file? or PDF export or printing, then you should avoid to do that, of course. Um, and only up to a specified zoom level because um, when you zoom deeply in, you automatically don't have the problem because only a few of the tiles are rendered. So you can uh, just uh, go the way uh, to use a higher quality. So the original approach had a high quality but had speed problems when, when all of the stuff was shown. And this is a good example how you can optimize stuff using the primitives. Um, you can just react inside the primitive decomposition or you have the alternative to do it in the active renderer. And in the renderer, when, when you get to uh, uh, pattern repeat pr primitive, you can just say um, when you know the concrete resolution, what uh, will I do to get this graphic out as fast as possible. And I, I have this here. This is this squirrel which, which you have now. And now you can really zoom in. It's still not extremely fast but you can see you can at least scroll in it and when you go really really deeply into it 
you see these patterns. So these patterns are not really useful in the end effect because they are more or less just used to make some gray tone. But of course, you cannot ignore the definition of the underlying SVG, so you have to render them somehow. It would look different. So this was solved and is much faster now, as you see. So maybe after each of the examples, I have, I have four of them. Maybe if you have questions for this example, make a short break. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Um, we have a problem with fat line drawing on Linux. Fat line is every line uh, may it be just a straight simple line with two points or may it be a Bezier curve when the line thickness is not on zero, which, which means in the office to have, uh, independent from the zooming, you have a one pixel line, which is, by the way, not provided by other office programs and just for historical reasons. Um, so most of the problems come from all the charts which have such fat lines and in X11 there is simply no support for filled poly polygons which are the result when you decompose uh, the fat line and of course no direct fat line support. So the problem is only on Linux but uh, with Cairo there is a solution now and uh, before the optimization, the poly polygons had to be decomposed to trapezoids in full quality, quality every time, no buffering, and this is, of course, pretty slow. And after the optimization, uh, I used Cairo, it's a direct uh, fat line Cairo renderer, because I made measurements uh, to decide what to do, and this is just uh, the best way to do it. I also tried before to buffer the trapezoidation completely, but this has a bad memory overhead. So uh, Cairo is just the way to go in here for the moment. Um, in long term, we really need better support to draw in some way uh, lines with some line thickness in just one color much better on Linux. We don't have a good solution today. I think what Quaylen uh, was just talking about may help to get in the right direction, but what we really need is a uh, um, renderer, a basic renderer for the edit views, which is using that stuff that Quaylen is now offering. And I hope we get this together because we can make huge steps forward when we do that. Questions to this example, maybe? By the way, it, uh, this example also has uh, the problems that the uh, uh, geometry information has to come somehow from the uh, 2D charts uh, to the edit view at all. So there, there's a bridge now which directly uses the primitive representation before that. Uh, there were even meter, meter files used for that. So uh, I don't show the, the previous example live because uh, loading that chart takes a long time. Maybe when we have some time left, I can show later. So we factor 3D renderer to use multi-threading. This is um, one thing I wanted to do for years and never found the time to do it. <laughs> because uh, the 3D visualization is a 2D primitive which decomposes the 3D primitive content uh, to uh, uh, RGBA bitmap, which is then painted. Um, due to uh, supporting many systems, we need a fallback software renderer implementation to show all the 3D stuff. And up to today, Unfortunately, the fallback software renderer is the only renderer for our 3D representations. So 3D is not overused in the office, but from time to time it gets used. And it would be nice to, um, again, use, use the stuff Quaylen was doing the last time to maybe at least get one day a direct hardware renderer for the 3D stuff. Would be no problem. You can just implement uh, a primitive renderer which converts the 3D primitive 
geometry definition completely to this RGBA bitmap, so just a replacement for this for this fallback renderer. But the fallback renderer will still be needed even in the future. You never know where the office is running and if you have something like OpenGL available. So we always need a good fallback and you also need a fallback uh, for PDF rendering or something. There's no way to get OpenGL to render bitmaps in 1200 DPI when you want to print something in high quality or something. It's bitmap data. <laughs> Uh, so before, uh, 2D primitive creates u dependent RGBR in its decomposition, already intelligent buffering, but single-threaded. Already intelligent buffering means uh, the fallback 3D software renderer is capable of just rendering parts of the 2D scene and it takes into account if you zoomed in or out and which, which part can be reused. And even if you just zoom slightly in up, up to a difference of 25 or 50 percent, I'm not sure, I have to look in the source, um, it even avoids re-rendering and uh, goes on bitmap scaling and stuff like that. So this is, all, this is already pretty much optimized and the, the interesting thing is this is all done inside of this one single primitive for a 3D representation. It's a 2D primitive for 3D, 3D scene representation. And all these optimizations and rendering and how to, how to react on it can either be done in the renderer, if the renderer is the screen target, or directly in the decomposition, which is offered from the primitive. So uh, there's even, even a choice, it's, it's dynamic to do. So, uh, luckily, there was al already a thread pool in the office when I, when I looked how I could parallelize that. Um, and at first it was hard to use it be because it was a global, global thread pool and of course it makes only sense to use the global instance of it. You could instantiate your own one, but of course makes no sense when you want to share your work uh, with, with all uh, existing CPUs. Um, lucky, luckily um, this was optimized so, so that you could wait exactly for the tasks you were scheduling yourself in your parallelization and not, not for all tasks which could break other mechanisms in the office. So after that I uh, pretty rough parallelized uh, Rendering did work pretty well and, and, bright and brought some really good success. So now, really, when you have eight cores, eight cores may be used, and um, you can use much bigger 3D objects than before. For example, when, when you have something like this in the software renderer, this is nothing. I would try to do with older, with, with older office versions. This simply, simply will, will take minutes, minutes to, not minutes, but much longer to render. And in, in the current version, you can see it uses fat lines. And even, even with fat lines, you get, you get a pretty decent uh, reaction now when, when, you, when, you are, when you are zooming or, or working. <coughs> working with, with, the, with the graphic stuff. So this is much better response and this, this is uh, still the software renderer, don't forget that, no hardware involved. And it's a software renderer which even does uh, anti-aliasing with uh, oversampling. So that you don't get some hard edges or something. So this is a big success and you can you can see here uh, as I said really the 3D renderer was using for short times a uh, lot of the CPUs. Questions for, for this optimization? It shows again what you, what you can really do uh, using uh, the primitives we have and where you, can, where you can go in between and do your optimizations. So, and hopefully, when we get these CPUs with 32 cores or something, 
we, we heard about, it will get even faster. But it's still the software fallback, so we should really find some time or sp sponsoring or someone willing to do uh, hardware 3D renderers. <coughs> so it's the, last, the last example is uh, more intelligent handling of animated GIFs. Uh, that's a problem um, and a bug. Uh, Qualen first found and roughly fixed uh, by just uh, on demand creating the GIF frames. Uh, because uh, with huge GIFs, there was an example GIF which was playing for eight, eight minutes or something. Ex extremely crazy big stuff. And of course, the office was breaking completely because footprint did not handle this. Because uh, up to then, the office was, was uh, importing the GIF completely. The GIF was uh, rendered into the single pictures as preparation and the single pictures were put in an animated switch primitive and it were in this case it were 800 or something of them all pre-rendered as RGBA images and uh, stored in, in this primitive. So for small GIFs this works perfectly and all, all the images are pre-rendered and you, you have a wonderful performance and no problems and the reason this was this was done uh, um, is that for the first time in the office history we were able to have multiple GIFs on one screen with overlapping and working animation stuff. But for this big, big fat GIF image we had just, just to do something more intelligent. And afterwards a specialization in animated switch primitive again the solution is to directly do something inside the, the primitive which was hosting all the, the sub-level data and add some intelligence, intelligence at that spot. Uh, so now uh, it's holding, it, it, it's looking uh, how much data it's holding, how many frames uh, there are. Um, does it allow itself to uh, use the pre-rendering? Does it buffer or not? How much does it buffer? There are memory limits set and um, <coughs> frames get thrown away when, when they are long time not used and, and all that dynamic buffering stuff uh, which works pretty well. And even the replay timing with the millisecond settings uh, get, get adapted when the first uh, animation playthrough shows that uh, it can just not be promised that uh, GIF is running in in the in the uh, defined mode, which uh, like in the file. So um, again, the, the the important point is that that this all can done can be done dynamically <coughs> inside the primitive stuff or alternatively in the renderer if you want. So uh, that's the fourth example. You have questions for the fourth example? So maybe I still have the time to show the other examples. So over time. Over time? Show me something. Yeah. So this, this, for example, is for fat line testing, just a lot of fat lines on, this is now on, on Windows, so I cannot show the optimization really, but this works now on, on Linux too. And just to show you the chart test, you, you can already come. I just, just want to show you the chart. The chart is now loading. And it will load for a long time, and at the, at the end you get a little peak from the 3D rendering. <laughs> so the 3D rendering and chart rendering is really optimized, but the, uh, the, the uh, chart, chart data and, and the calc loading is really long and not <laughs> and not parallelized. Well, you see, well, this is a really big fat 3D chart and this makes only a small peak with the software render. Thank you, okay. Your turn. Yay. <laughs> do we have an HDMI converter? That's the question. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah.